Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is going to be Staphylococcus aureus. So what we're going to cover here is going to be biology, virulence factors, epidemiology, diseases, diagnoses, treatment, and also I wanted to touch a little bit on the background and history of MRSA, or methicillin resistant Staph aureus. So biology, most Staphylococci are non-modal and able to grow in a variety of different conditions such as aerobically and anaerobically, and also they can grow in the presence of a high concentration of salt. These bacteria are present on the skin and mucous membranes. They're opportunistic pathogens, so they're considered a secondary infection um, for immunocompromised patients, such as in surgeries and etc. Also on the right here, I have a biochemical test sheet. Um, so cat they're catalase positive, coagulase negative, and the gram positive cocci. MSA means man mannitol salt auger. auger. So we have here, talking about the salt concentration, oxidase negative, um, beta hem hemolysis, and also, like I said, they are facultative anaerobes. So moving on, we're going to talk about the virulence factors. So virulence factors include structural components that facilitate adherence to host tissues and avoid phagocytosis, and a variety of toxins and hydrolytic enzymes. So I'm going to first talk about the structural components of Staph aureus. So it has a capsule which inhibits phagocytosis and chemotaxis, and it also helps inhibit uh, proliferation of mononuclear cells. Um, also, the slime layer facilitates adherence to foreign bodies and inhibits phagocytosis as well. So continued here, um, the structural components are pepti peptidoglycan, tachoic acid, protein A, and protein A helps inhibit antibody uh, mediated clearance. And uh, onto the right here, I have toxins, cytotoxins, which um, are which is basically toxic for many cells, including erythrocytes, fibroblast. Um, leukocytes, macrophages, and platelets, and also have the exfoliative, exfoliative toxins, uh, abbreviated ETA and ETB, and also have the enterotoxins A through R, and then also, this is very important to know, toxic shock syndrome, which is basically a super antigen which stimulates proliferation of T cells and release of cytokines and produces leakage or cellular destruction of endothelial cells. So very important, I would definitely write that down if you are taking notes or, or um, if you have this for a class. Very, very important. Okay, so to continue with the virulence factors, um, there are a few enzymes that Staph aureus produces, which is coagulase, which uh, converts fib fibrogen to fibrin, um, hyaluronidase, I hope I said that right, which hydrolyzes hy hyaluronic acid in connective tissue, promoting the spread of st staphylococci within the tissue. This is very important. And also fibrolysin, uh, which dissolves fibrin clots, lipases, which hydrolyzes lipids, and then nuclease. Um, which hydrolyzes the DNA. So this is some examples of, um, for instance, this is the um, coagulase right here. This is the beta hemolysis in the previous slide. You can see the clearing. Um, neat little lab trick. If you are doing labs and you do have a beta hemolysis bacteria, you can hold the plate up to the light and you can actually see through it. So that's a very interesting uh, trick. And this is also an MSA plate. Notice the yellow color. This is um, this is indicating a positive for acid production, and there is growth. So, um, just thought I'd share. So epidemiology, um, it is considered a normal human flora um, on the skin and mucosal surfaces. So you find it on your skin. Organisms can survive on dry surfaces for very long periods of time. Um, most infections are within the patient's own organisms. So. Um, and these organisms are very, very ubiquitous. So they're found everywhere. So there are many diseases caused by Staph aureus. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about each and every one of these, but um, the ones I want you to know are here and are listed. So to begin, toxin-mediated diseases would be the scalded skin, skin syndrome, um, food poisoning, toxic shock. This is also, toxic shock is very important. Um, type of disease um, related to Staph aureus. And here's a photo of what this looks like on someone's hands. Um, also, there's a very high mortality rate if toxic shock isn't treated um, very rapidly or very promptly. So some also some so superative infections are gonna be impetigo, folliculitis, carbuncules, bacteremia, endocarditis, pneumonia, 
um, osteomyelitis, and also septic arthritis. So these are a few uh, of the diseases, each and every one of them very, very important. So diagnosis is going to be microscopy um, and also staph grows rapid, rapidly on non-selective media. And also I have a little star right here uh, for you to know. So selective media such as mannitol salt auger. So in that little picture I saw or I, I showed you a while ago that had the, the yellow plate. Um, it's very useful in recovering staph aureus in contaminated specimens. So once you find out that your organism is Staphylococcus aureus, treatment is um, imperative, like I said a while ago. So to treat it, localized infections um, are managed by incision and drainage, and also a combination of antibiotic therapy is very, very important. Um, also, I uh, some, have some drugs listed here. Uh, so oral therapy would include doxycycline, clindamycin, and minocycline. Now, these aren't, the, these aren't all, the, all the antibiotics that are used, but this is just to name a few. So um, almost done. So I wanted to talk a little bit about methicillin resistant Staph aureus or MRSA. Um, this has been a very, very big name in the past uh, decade, I guess. So in the late 1980s, MRSA strains spread rapidly in, um, in insusceptible immunocompromised patients in hospitals and um, other places of that matter. And also in 2003, MRSA outbreaks began to reemerge as community acquired cutaneous infections. These MRSA strains arose independent, independently worldwide. So this is um, methicillin resistant staph aureus is um, the classic case of antibiotic resistant bacteria, which means the overuse of antibiotics. So this is just um, a little something that we should keep an eye on as a community, um, as a population, because overuse of antibiotics is um, very, very important and it needs a lot more study. So some features of that of MRSA is going to be the SCC MEC gene or the 4 SCC MEC gene. Um, this encodes the methicillin resistance to the Staph aureus, to the methicillin with Staph aureus. Uh, the P34 leucocytin is also very important. And number three, the susceptibility to most antibiotics other than beta lactams. So here are my references. I hope you guys enjoyed this, this very, very short overview, this very short presentation. And um, thank you for watching.